Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman, Nine Dot Professional. This is our ongoing series, AlphaGo versus the World, as uh, just one top player after another uh, tackles AlphaGo, going uh, here under the name Master. This, of course, is a series that we'll be using for volume two of uh, AlphaGo to Zero. I uh, hope to have that out later uh, later this year at some point. Um, so, uh, Michael, I think uh, do we have another, I think we're in the Korean player section of, uh, of this series, if I'm not mistaken. Sort of. Um, we have another Korean player, An Sun Jim. Uh, he's a seven dot at the time. He was born in Korea in 1991. So that makes him mid-20s, I guess. And he was a fairly prominent player for a while, though he doesn't have a world championship. Mm. And so, like, I recognize the name, for instance. So in this game, actually, um, previously we saw a game that sort of ended pretty precipitately. <laughs> but in this game, it's going to be very gradual. So he's, he's going to be um, in more control of the game, you might say. Cool. And I think it's partly because the human has black stones. It's also because he's playing a, an opening that um, he's playing... Uh, just to start the game here, he's mm -hmm. playing the AlphaGo opening. Um, what I'm calling the AlphaGo opening here is where Black plays a star point, a three, four point, and then plays this large knight's move. And I think the players, although this is a, an opening that could be played before, I think it could be that some of the players are consciously imitating AlphaGo just to see how AlphaGo handles that, because the human players at this point would be thinking of playing something towards the upper side, like an, an, an approach move here, or splitting the side like this. this. These are the two moves that were prominently played before AlphaGo and in 2016. So um, every time someone played that way with AlphaGo as Black, Black would then play an approach to the lower left corner and we've seen that pattern a number of times. It was very successful for AlphaGo. And so people are trying to figure out how to deal with that by playing this very opening against AlphaGo. At least that's how I see it. And White plays a similar. So this is also the way that White handles it is to play this corner enclosure in the lower left corner. Black plays here. And the fact that Black does get this large area on the upper side, a large area that is controlled by Black, it does mean that White will be uh, sort of floating in there, and White will be playing more passively than if they get in a big fight to start with. I think it tends to give the human player more chance to um, last longer. Mm -hmm. So it, it is successful in that way. And the, that, the winning percentage is still, still perfectly fine for Black. So Black extends here. Um, I guess this is still okay. Like this is a point where you're going to see computer programs suggesting a shoulder hit, for instance, something like this. And even now, I don't really understand completely how it's working. So um, I think it's natural that human players would not be playing that at this time. Hmm. And white plays here. Now this is a strange move that is um, has become more popular now. It's um, it's one of the ways you can approach. Black's position there in the upper left. And we didn't really have this move before. We didn't really have this move before AlphaGo showed it to us. It does show up um, in the computer analysis now every so often. And I think you see it in some top of some of the top games that human plays. Um, except for the fact that people really like the two-space Shimari at this point instead of the low one that's in this game. So the two-space shimari is so common that, that maybe this shape is not showing up as much as I would like. So black kicks here. Black had the choice here of playing here or, or playing. Maybe this would have been this would have been giving white less momentum. This way, black is heating up the area a little bit. It's not a serious mistake though. White plays here, black plays this side. So black is going to play a hane on one side or the other. Like if white plays on this side then Black is going to play on this side. So that's mm -hmm. the idea that Black had there. And it makes sense. It, it's, there's not, it's not really that bad. There is the cut here. Actually, um, when White pushes through and cuts there, it's going to resemble 
a different joseki that I talk about a lot, where right has started with the attachment at the start point there. It's, it's the, the shapes that come up are fairly similar, although the, we can see the order of moves here is completely different. And black played here. This is protecting the corner, trying to put pressure on white. Um, black could have crawled and more forcefully simplified it. Like the, it's the same thing that the problem is that uh, later on, when white pushes through and cuts here, and we get to this position, it's a it's a dangerous position for black. Like for instance, in this shape, white can actually crawl three times and capture the, these black stones. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're seeing black doing something about it. For the time being, maybe it was okay because maybe black could could have played something like this. And if black can force with that move, then black will be all right. But there's the question of whether white will be switching to this side and it gets really complicated. And so it makes sense that black wants to play something there to, to get rid of that danger. And the move he chose was this one. The, the problem with this move is it was not very forceful. So it would have, might have been better for black to crawl here. And then if white covers here, black can play away. So I think this, actually this was a point where the, the winning percentage did seem to change very slightly. But mm -hmm. black's still the vicinity of 50%. It's still not bad for black, even in this position. And you know, with six and a half point Comey, black does seem to start with a slight advantage, like 53% or something like that. So in this game, it's, it's, it's taking a bit of time for black to go below 50%, actually. And, and I think, and, and you've raised this before, but just a reminder, these are fairly um, um, rapid games. And so there's something to be said uh, to that point for keeping it simple. To just, yes. to, to, you know, if you got short time periods for reading, um, to, you know, I kind of like that for, you know, that, that's just me, but it keeps it simple. Well, you know, these are top pros. They're mostly, most of the players that we're seeing here are world champions. Mm -hmm. And they're all players who are in the top um, part of the world ranking. Um, so they're probably pretty confident about their ability to read in short mm -hmm. time limits. But we did see, like in the previous game, uh, that was game 43, uh, a human player uh, completely falling apart in the first fight. Yeah, so did. that can happen. <laughs> When, when the opponent is alpha it can happen, yeah. So um, white has just played this hanging connection. With this move, white's group is pretty much settled. Like white has something that looks like eye space there and is out in the center. So black um, abandons the attack. This All of this makes, makes sense. So that, that would sort of explain why the game is not really going very badly for black. Black is still, at this point, was still above 50%. Um, the computer program, Kadabu, was suggesting Black should curl around here and just play this exchange to finish off that Black territory. Um, it's not something that I would have, have thought of, but um, it suggested that Black still has time to, to dive in here. So just expanding that Black territory a little bit more and then diving into lower side to take an take a lead in territory, because this is a game actually where Black does seem to have a lead in territory for quite a while in the, into the game. It's just the size of this area here um, is pretty big. So Black does have more solid territory than White does, and White's, White's advantage is White's potential on the lower half of the board. So a lot of um, Black's game plan should involve in invading it like this. So I think that um, my understanding of curling around here, although it seems to be a, an area that is not so important. It's the fact that uh, white pushing there is sort of a forcing move also. So black is just going to play this exchange and create a flow of moves where black gets to invade the lower side. So actually, this, this is pretty um, effective. And I think it would have still given a, a slight lead to black at this point. In the game, black plays a big opening point. It, makes, it sort of makes sense. And white plays here. We see the winning percentage moving just a little bit. White, um, white's over 50%. Now it's white's 52.5%, according to Kadogo. And you know that, that changes with the uh, version, probably. Um, I'm doing this whole series on the same version. So at this point, it's probably not the 
the most modern um, version of Cardobo. I'm talking about the network that is. Okay. Um, I wanted to keep it consistent just cool. for this. I'll probably be using a, a new network for the book though. Okay. You might see me change actually. Um, but at this point, it's 52.5% for white tests. Mm. And it's saying it's five points on the board before coming, that is. So it's a mm -hmm. one and a half point win for white. You know, it's it's just such a small difference. It's not really an issue at this point. And black plays here. Um, again, uh, the suggested move was curling around here. So this is, um, and, and again, the idea will be to play this exchange and then be diving into the lower side. So that pattern there that I was showing, uh, it seems to be pretty important for, for Black's game, game plan here. In the game, Black simply played here. And that probably wasn't, um, when I see the computer sort of not wanting to play here, it does make sense because the upper side is open here on the second line. So yeah. that whole area, maybe it wasn't so important. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that because it seems like um, uh, Black, Black's maybe not quite sure what he wants to do with that stone, if anything, and this is starting to commit, him, commit himself to that as a group, right? Yeah. Yes, like um, if Black had not played that and instead relied on that mark point to reduce White's territory, it would have mm -hmm. been perfectly okay to uh, sacrifice the one stone. But when Black starts here, Black's going to have to continue moving with that group. Mm -hmm. and it's going to end up moving out towards the center, um, but Black will be limited by the fact that Black has this group here that Black has to deal with. And that is going to restrict what Black can do with the rest of the board. So maybe it would have been better for Black just to forget that stone and sacrifice it on a mm -hmm. small scale, small, small as possible, but, and just play away for the time being. Moving as you were, the point, but you were pointing out that, that really um, uh, the AI really wants to get to that lower side as yes. quickly as possible. Sometimes these AI pro programs just say the same move a number of times. Um, it's just an important point. Um, pushing there is usually going to be forcing for white, so there's there's that difference. And it's so it's finishing off the left side territory, and it's going to create a, um, a it's it's going to create a flow of moves where black can jump into the lower side. Some maybe this far, depending on how white answers it. So there is that. So it was maybe a bit heavy. I think Black might have sort of momentarily had the idea that he could attack White. Mm -hmm. It didn't really turn out that way. Um, White pushes here and is moving out. The, the pushing move here is is sort of forcing for White. So it's not. So White also has some initiative in this fight. So that's what's the problem for Black. And so Black has to answer that. And we're going to see White push through and cut here. This didn't really amount to a lot of trouble, but at this point in the game, um, it is already something like 60% for white. And it didn't really go much further as far as the difference in territory is concerned. Like at this point, uh, white is supposed to be um, winning by four and a half points because the uh, Katago is saying that black is ahead two before Komi. And it sort of stayed that way. Like um, in the end, I think this was two and a half points difference. And that's just AlphaGo giving some back at the end. So just to look at the sequence here, white is uh, protecting that group there. And black ends up this um, connection in general is just very flimsy and the whole group is weak. And white's going to play like this and nothing happened really on the left side of the board. But we're going to see White um, just take off those four stones on the upper side. And then White's going to surround the lower side. And Black doesn't really have an effective attack against these stones. So White sort of, it looks like White has sacrificed those stones, but Black doesn't have time to capture them because the lower side is bigger. So in this board position, White has surrounded this, White has surrounded the lower side. This part of the lower side is already White territory. White has got some territory here. And so white has caught up in territory. Black is going to have to surround. Black is going to have to invade this area. It means white's going to have the initiative to save those stones in the center. So this is just going to be a kind of a textbook example of AlphaGo taking control in the late middle game and making use of an advantage. So white does give a bit back in the end game, but it, it won anyway. 
So interesting. Uh, if you just jump right back to that uh, move at uh, L15, um, which especially once you showed the rest of the moves here, it just um, it just seems like uh, really sort of the wrong wrong idea. Oh, uh, the black move. Okay. The black move. Sorry, the black move. Yeah, at L. Oh, I was I was thinking white move. Yeah. yeah sorry. Um, so this black move. Yeah, it's it was back. just heavy. Black didn't really get much of an attack out of it, and it was heavy. Yeah, just so interesting because I can see you know you had those two stones there, those two white stones there mm -hmm. that definitely do look you know attackable, and so it, it's certainly at the in the moment seems perfectly reasonable, but uh, you know nothing really happens. There's no big fireworks, but as you say, you know black just winds up with the the attacker. This is reminding me of when you know when the walls get attacked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that black root became a long term liability for black. Fascinating. All right, good stuff. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, stick with us. We'll see you next game.